Hey, turn on y'all, fam. This part five, once again, brother. So I'm going to pick, off, pick back up where I left off at. In the, in, the, in the prophet book, Malachi, they call it Malachi in the translation. Shout out to three brothers and sisters at this time. And I'm, I'm, I'm going to start off um, in verse 8. And we're talking about the offerings, the new moon, and the Sabbath, brother and, and, and sisters. It's very important at this time that we cover these things. May the peace of y'all come upon you when you learn to obey him. It's very important, brothers and sisters, that we um, obey y'all, complies with the orders and instructions of, of the one who is in charge, who, who have all the power, who is y'all, our creator, brothers and sisters. And all the wonderful things that await us to those who obey him. Man, he said, it's a with a man rob, but rob the creator. They got the word of God. They added that to the translation. Hope you did your homework, family. Surely not. And yet you have robbed me. He said, what do you mean? When did we ever rob you? You have robbed me of the tithes and offerings due to me. See, what did he say due to me? The parables. So they substituted uh, the pure offerings and gave the Father by the uh, permission of the priest of that day, the, the, the crooked priest, they gave, told the people they could bring sick, lame, blind animals to the Creator. That's how they robbed them from giving all the pure ones that he, um, that he accept and, and, and start presenting to him that the defiled animals, the animal defects that Abiyah did not accept. That's what he's telling them. That's how our people robbed him. they here. So he said, uh, you have robbed me of the tithes and offering due to me. And so the awesome curse of Barah is cursing you, see, for your whole nation has been robbing me, see, of the things, tithes and offerings. Is it bring all the tithes into the storehouse so that there will be food enough in my temple? If you do, see, he was telling us back then in time of Malachi, I told him to do this, but our people would not listen to y'all. So the curses came upon it, and I'll be uh, eventually expelled us all from out of the land. But that's where the offerings go. The tithe offering is it, it, you take the tithe off to the priest that dwells around the temple. See, it's, if you do, I will open up the windows of heaven for you. And this is especially talking about the people of Yada. See. And pour out blessings so great you won't have room enough to take it in. Try it. Let me prove it to you. And your crops will be large. For I will guard them from insect and plagues. And your grapes won't sh shrivel away before they ripen, says Yah of hosts, and all the nations will call you blessed, for you will be a land of sprinkling with see gladness. And these are the promises of Yah of hosts. See, when we learn to obey him and bring. And do as I bring the prayer offer to Yah. He said, your attitude towards me has been proud and arrogant, says Yah. But you say, what do you mean? What have we said that we shouldn't? He said, listen, you have said, it is foolish to worship Barah. And obey him. What benefit does it do to obey his laws and to and to sorrow 
and mourn for our sins. From now on, as far as we concern, bless our the arrogant, for those who do evil shall prosper, and those who who did Barak to punish them shall go all scot free. That's what they thought. See, it said then those who fear and love Yah spoke often of him to each other and he had a book of remembrance drawn up in which he recorded the names of those who feared him and loved to think about him. Let me continue. And they shall be mine. See, those who fear Yah, is they shall be mine, says Yah of hosts. And that day when I make up my jewels. See, when the time when he make up his jewels is the time when we go in the wilderness and he choose those and remove the rebels, see. And I will spare them as a man spares his obedient and dutiful son. Then you will see the difference between Barah, the creator, treatment of the righteous men, and the bad, see the sinner, or the rebels, and between those who serve him and those who don't, see, at that time. That's when we're going to see the big difference of Yah. As I'm going to go to um, Ezekiel chapter um, 43, verse 1 to 7. So it's a time period, brothers and sisters. In the wilderness, we're going to see the difference. How are y'all going to treat those who serve him and those who disobey him at that time? So it's a time for all things in our y'all plan. So you got to keep, you got to understand that too, brothers. You got to know that. It's the afterward. Even though at the time we look at all this trouble on the earth and people doing walking in their own ways, it's a time where y'all going to make the big distinction when he make up his jewels at that time in the wilderness. It's after it's an after afterward, this from uh, verse forty three of Ezekiel, verse one is is about to talk about uh, get into the uh, the temple talk. This is very important. That's why I want, I want to go here and show you this right here, verse one to seven, because it's we talk about the temple again. I'm showing you a time period when we go back home and the third temple be built right here in chapter forty three begins off right here. Say like, afterward, he brought me out. Again to the passageway through the outer wall leading to the east. This talking about the temple. You go read first forty uh, on down to forty three and on past that before it talked much about the third temple being built. See this all this we're gonna have to know upon our return in the home. So, and it's again he to excuse me. It's afterwards he brought me out. Again, to the passageway through the outer wall leading to the east. And suddenly, the honor, they got the glory of Barah, of Yasha Yel Yah, appeared from the east. The sound of his coming was like the roar of a rushing water waters and the whole landscape lighted up with his honor it was just as I seen it in the other visions first by the Sheba canal and then later at Yashalom when he came to Destroy the city. And I fell down before him with my face to the desk. And the honor of Yah came into the temple through 
the eastern passageway. Then the spirit took me up and brought me into the inner court. And the art of Yah filled the temple. See, so not showing in this vision, he saw a temple. And I heard Yah speaking to me from within the temple. The man who had been measuring was still standing beside me. And Yah said to me, Son of death, this is the place of my throne and my footstool where I shall remain living among the people of Yashayel Yah forever. And they and their king will not defile my Kodesh name any longer throughout okay let me see I can't see the word throughout okay throughout throughout uh, I mean um, let me see through the uh, adultery adulterous worship of other gods the idols or worship being the totem poles Erected by their kings. See brothers and sisters. I wanted to show you that. How the honor of Yah going to appear. As I'm going to go to chapter 44. Chapter 44 verse 20. The 24. Right here. 20 to 24. Chapter 44 verse 20. The 24 reads right here. It said, and, and they must not let their hair grow too long, this time of the priest, nor shave it off. I'm, I'm showing you this because this is doing the, uh, the temple. Something else I want to show you about the temple. See right here in verse five, 44, verse 5 reads, And Yah said to me, Son of death, notice carefully. Use your eyes and ears. Listen to all I tell you about about the laws and rules of the temple of Yah. Note carefully who may be admitted to the temple and who is to be included, excluded. From it. It's very important, brother. So this is something you need to read, fam. If I had time, I would go and read all that to you. But it's important, see. And so right here in verse 15 it reads. It said, However, the sons of Zadok, of the tribe of Levi, continue as my priests in the temple when Israel abandoned me. See, this was, that was in the, uh, the second temple. For... Idols, these men shall be my ministers. See, of that seed, and they shall stand before me to offer the fat and the blood of the offering. Says Yah of Gerah. This is the top man in top of the third temple. And they shall enter my temple and come to my table to minister to me, and they shall. Faith, let me say, fulfill my requirements. See, so we talking right. See right here, say the requirements of the priest is very important. When I'm getting into you, can read all that about the requirements of the priest. So the requirement of the priest right here, uh, so I'm, I'm gonna go through some. They must not let their hair grow too long, nor shave it off. Regular, moderate haircuts are all they are allowed. No priest may drink wine before coming to the inner court. He may marry only a 
a they got a Jewish but a a, a, a person from the Abu Nation of Yashiel Yah Nation made it or the widow of a priest, he may not marry a divorced woman. They say he shall teach my people the difference between what is Kodesh, they got holy, and what is not Kodesh. They got secular. They say what is right and what is wrong. So that's their duty. And they will serve as judges to resolve any disagreement among my people. See, the priests will do these things and their decision must be based upon my Torah laws and the priests themselves shall obey my rules and regulations at all Kodesh feasts, see, set apart feasts. And they shall see to it that my Sabbath is kept a Kodesh day. See, that's the requirement. See, brother, this is the during the time when we be, they be restored back to the uh, uh, office as as appointed back to the business as priests and carry out the functions. That's why I remember I read you earlier. Um, right here, so this is the functions. So let me read a little bit more. It's a, a priest must not defile them, themselves by being in the presence of a dead person unless it is his father, mother, child, brother, or unmarried sister. In such case, it is all right, but afterwards, he must wait seven days before he could be clean and and be able to perform his temple duties again. And the first day he returned to work and enters the inner court and the temple, he must offer a sin offering for himself and Yabarah say as to property they shall not owe any for I am their heritage that is enough see right here brother says that's why it's so important that we know these things I just want to read a little bit more and their food shall be gifts and offerings brought to the temple by the people see and the Suri offerings, the sin offerings, and the guilt offerings. Whatever anyone gives to Yah shall be the priest. See, that's that's how it all lands out to to the priest. So, so what we have given to Yah, you actually give to the priest of the offerings. So these are the things we got to know, brothers. So it's very important. And something I wanted to recover because I was talking about um, right here. Um, the judges, uh, the judgment. I, I went over here about um, the, uh, the feast, about the Sabbath, right here, in verse um, 44. I'm excuse me, 24. It says, uh, And they will serve as judges to solve any, dis any, any disagreement among my people. Their decision must be based upon my laws, and the priests themselves shall obey my rules. And regulation at all Kodesh feasts, and they shall see to it that the Sabbath is kept in a Kodesh, a Kodesh day, a set apart day. You see, but the priest first uh, must be as I'm gonna go to Malachia, go back to Malachia real quick, and end it on with Malachia, back to the message of Yah chapter 3. It's very important. Because the priest first must go through this process right here. See right here, it say um verse three, chapter three of Malachi. They call Malachi it's a light, a refiner of silver. He will set and closely watch as the dross is burned away 
and he will purify the Levites. See, the Levites, remember the priests, all priests come from the Levite tribe. So that's why he purified the Levites, the ministers of Barah, refining them like gold or silver as, I mean, excuse me, so that they will do their works. Remember, I just showed you for Barah with pure hearts. Then, once more, Yah will enjoy the offering, see, brought to him by the people of Yad and Yah Shalom. That's why I just read you in, in Ezekiel, brothers and sisters, about the, the temple, see. So, um, the temple, so in the time of the messenger, is before Yah come and come to his temple. And he showed Malachi, I mean, not Malachi, uh, Ezekiel, in a vision how he was going to come to the temple in the east. And something I want to um, read to you about in, in, in um, Ezekiel. About how the temple, when he appeared into the temple in Ezekiel chapter uh, 40, he, uh, the temple, uh, the temple, the east gate going to remain um, closed. So that, see, that's very important information to know too, brothers and sisters. About how the purpose of Yah, so we know certain points we can't cross, and only one gonna be allowed to to enter into that. I thought I wrote it down in my notes, but I can't find it at this moment. Um, I wanted to show you uh, when the Messiah will be the only one will be allowed to come near that gate, but not enter into that gate. But he don't know he gonna be the of uh, y'all gonna allow him to sit near to feast to eat. Then go back out the same way he came in the passageway. And he's going to be the only one allowed. Yeah, I would that I could find it real quick. In the temple standing in front of the temple. Okay, let me, I'm trying to locate it real quick. Brother, this is before my video uh, cut cut me short. I wanted to show you that. Cause I did tell you I was going to show you that. But she didn't have enough time. If I don't show you that, I'll show you, show you in, maybe in the next video. But give me a moment. I'm going to see can I locate it real fast. Because that part is very important too to know. You can have that for your notes. And um, you see, all the people is should bring their offerings to the prince. Okay. Okay. And this should be done at the time of feast, new moon concerning. Okay. So we we got some things ahead of us, brothers and sisters. We got some things we must do. We must uh, return to y'all. And I'll be, I will return to us, brothers and sisters. Uh, and I'm, I'm going to talk as I look for this uh, real quick. Cause it's very important. I, I wanted to share that with you. Let's see, can I find it real quick? In the center place, and the, and, and the kings, the five, I'm, I'm just going to scan it through this right here. So the sun described the temple. I have showed you to the pe the you to the people. Right here, see, see right here, say, um, is the son of, son of death. Describe the temple I have shown you to the people of Yahshua Yel Yah. See, so it's very important. It's described the temple because the people of Yah got to build this temple. Tell them its appearance and its plan so they will be ashamed of all their sins. And if they are truly ashamed of what they have done, then explain to them the details of it construction and its doors and the entrance and everything about it. Write out all the directions and rules for them to keep. And this is the base, basic law of the temple. Let me see. I can see the word Kodeshness. The entire top of the hill where the temple is built is Kodesh. See? Yes. This is the primary law concerning it. See? So the whole entire hill where the temple is Kodesh. The yard. And that's, that's so important. I would that I could show you that real quick. 
about uh the pre I'm trying to scan and see can I find it so the desk a little careful I'm trying to look at my notes. I can't remember where I put it there in my notes. I thought I wrote it down, but I I can't find it, brothers and sisters. I wanted to find it so you real quick to show you something about the uh the Messiah. See, and then he brought me through the passage in front of the temple and look I saw it. Okay, the foot I'm trying to remember where it's at. Okay, let me see can I um go over a little bit and skip see, see can I pick it up real quick. So it's 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 so beautiful, brothers and sisters. I mean it's so wonderful. If, if you can see it with your eyes and read it. Maybe let that be your homework. I'm I'm, I'm gonna try to look for for one more minute or maybe two. Oh uh, brothers and, and sister real quick. I just don't I didn't memorize the scripture by heart. We're talking about the Messiah. Prince shall be required to furnish. Okay, that's the requirement of the, of the priest, the prince, because the prince is the uh, is the uh, Messiah. And the prince shall no longer oppressed. Okay, that's the princess. Okay, I'm trying to see uh, somewhere beneath. It's a um home when the divide here. And 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 they may be the temple gods. Okay, that's talking about certain uh, priests will be the temple gods. But the, but the sons of Zadok will be the ones that um, reside over the Kodesh things. They that go into certain paths where the other priests can't go. So that's important to know. So these are all the things we got to learn. And we will, we had, um, y'all will give us time as we uh, migrate together. We had time to go over these things. And y'all brought me back to the outer wall of the eastern passageway. But it, it was closed. And he said to me, this gate should remain closed. It should never be open. Okay, let me go read verse 1. Chapter 44, verse 1. See, it Then Yah brought me back to the outer wall and uh, wall eastern passage way, but it was closed. And he said to me, this gate shall remain closed and it shall never be open. No man shall pass through it for Yah, Barak of Israel, entered here. And so it shall remain shut. See, only the prince, see, the Messiah, because he is the prince may set inside the passageway to feast there before Yah. See, but he shall go and come only through the entry, okay, the uh, hall of passage. See. Then he brought me out. So that's it. Right there. So that's 44 verse 1. The 2 show you that right there. How because Abia entered into that way. He said that gate should re that this gate remain closed and it shall never be open. And no man shall pass through it. For Yah the rock of Israel entered here. So it shall remain shut. Only the prince, because he is the prince. May set inside the passageway to the to feast there before Yah. See, so these these got to be straightened. These are things we got to be aware of because somebody will get themselves killed and they go up there by mistake. See, that's a deadly mistake you don't want to make, brother and sister. So these are things we got to be aware of. With that, I say to that Yah.